Yeah, to me, that, that's what it's all about. And that's the most enjoyable part. It's probably the only part where you're, you're not suffering from nerves. It's just a wonderful feeling, like, you know, let's get out there and enjoy our, the drive. Laszlo Juhasz is finishing the fast trotting section. At over 12 miles an hour, this is only just possible without incurring penalties for exceeding the time allowed. The marathon is a test of endurance as well as skill. If the horses are not at the peak of fitness, they'll be too tired after the roads and tracks to negotiate the final hazards. Well, we start on the marathon and... and um... The horse has been in, in full of beans, especially the stallion, and he was on springs, you know. And um, about three parts around section A, he started to sweat, which was unusual, because he never sweats. And I said to him, uh, groom, I said, Someone, he's not right, that horse. I could feel, you know, when you drive horses every day, you can feel when they're not right. And uh, when we got to the end of the walk, he was, he was distressed. And uh, I called the vet up to have a look at him, and he, he's got colic. We always wind up taking the shortcuts. I'm not a crasher or a banger or anything like that. It's just that um, we wind up where we have to go those short ways, and sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't. Four, three, two, one, you're off! The walk sections must be driven at nearly five miles an hour. A fast walk for some breeds of horse. In the past, people drove high-stepping horses. It wasn't for sure, this was a safety factor. The horses that picked the knees up didn't trip. A lot of people, myself included, we were experimenting, crossing different breeds, trying to get a perfect competition driving horse, one that uh, has elegance and, and paces to do dressage, yet still has stamina and strength to do a marathon. Prince Philip, with his horses going well, approaches the end of the course. The horses have to cooperate. You have to know what they're expected to do. It's not like a motor car. You can't sort of press buttons and turn handles. They have to rely on you, and you have to rely on them. So there's a lot of compatibility about it. And that can only come through getting to know them as individuals. In fact, most of the time, you're going around psychoanalyzing each horse in turn because one horse doesn't like blue plastic and another one doesn't like waving branches, another one doesn't like pigs, and another one doesn't like trees. And so you constantly have to sort of think, well, now what's going to happen next? You've got to understand the mentality and the characteristics of each of the horses in your team. I think we've now got to a stage where we are driving literally miniature tanks with aluminium wheels or steel wheels and all steel chassis and frames for strength. I think we might see a change in the rules to stop these people who are crashing, literally smashing the way through the obstacle. Number two. 
I don't have as much strength as some drivers do, particularly some of the younger men have a good deal more strength. So I have to rely on the horses having learned to do what I tell them to do with my voice as well as with the reins. Every carriage must carry a navigator and a groom, who often play a vital role maintaining the stability of the carriage with their own body weight. Bill Long, with owner Finn Casperson riding as groom and navigator, comes up to the final hazard. Bill comes through into third place in the marathon, only a few points behind the Dutchman. This is his best ever performance in a world championship. With Deirdre Piri, he takes the American team into fourth position, just within reach of a medal. I thought the whole marathon really went well. And the horses were just working so super today. You know, it's a lucky day. It was luck. A lot of it there. And there's a couple places we could have really been stuck bad, but we, we got lucky. Oh, but, no, I really felt good about the marathon and uh, everything went well. I was very pleased with the marathon. Hazards went a bit slower than I'd hoped for, but uh, it rode very smooth. It was a nice course, fun course to drive. Uh, today I think it went very well for me, of course, because otherwise I wouldn't have won the competition. But uh, the hazards weren't too difficult for us because in Holland we are used to very tight hazards. And that's the reason I think that we Dutch people are ahead at the moment. The pleasure for me is to get round without uh, a disaster of any kind. If I win, it's a, it's a sort of bonus, but uh, it's, the, it's I, I'm, I suppose I'm really a, rather an old-fashioned amateur in that sense, that I, I, I enjoy the competition rather than the winning. <laughs> It's a new sport, it's a small sport. And in the past, it's been like one big family. Everybody knows everybody, everybody helps everybody. And we always had parties and we had fun. But it's gonna slowly change because of the sponsorship coming in, there's more money coming in. People are giving more money for carriages, they're giving more money for horses. And when this happens, then professionalism comes in and they take it more serious and they have to win and and I think we'll slowly see a lot of friendliness disappear. The final day of the event. With the dangers of the marathon behind them, the competitors are back in the arena in full regalia for the cone driving. It was designed originally to prove that the horses were still sound and supple after doing an 18 mile marathon to come out and be able to do the course. Drivers must guide their teams through pairs of cones set only slightly wider than the wheels of each carriage. The cones are made of light plastic and each has a ball balanced on top which falls if the cone is touched to give five penalties. Ten penalties on the obstacles for William Long, member of the American team. No time penalties. Takes his score up to 130. Bill Long and Deirdre Perry both have two knockdowns, so the American team remain in fourth place. Laszlo Juhas drives a clear round to win the individual bronze medal, leaving two Dutchmen to battle for the gold and silver. There are only four points between these two. The first, Chardon, must now drive a clear round to secure the silver medal and to stand a chance of winning the whole event.
Veldstra is the last to drive. A single mistake, and his teammate will win the individual goal. First place, with only four points in hand, so he can't knock anything down. Veldstra drives clear and becomes the new world four-in-hand driving champion.